In this video, we will look at the rise of predatory publishing in academia, negative consequences of falling prey to predatory publishing, red flags of predatory publishing, and useful resources to help you identify predatory publishers and journals. Before we can look at what predatory publishing is, we first need to understand the publishing environment from which it emerged. The traditional publishing model was adopted in the 1960s by commercial publishers in order to make a profit from publishing scholarly work. The researchers and peer reviewers were not paid for their work on scientific papers. Under the traditional publishing model, researchers first design and conduct experiments and then submit their manuscripts to the publishers. The publishers do a preliminary review of the manuscript to determine whether they are acceptable, then pass it on to be peer-reviewed. The reviewers suggest edits to the authors, who then try to address those comments. Once researchers satisfactorily address the reviewers' concerns, the publishers accept the manuscript, provide vetting and distribution services, and then publish the article in their journal. The published article is then made available to other researchers via journal subscriptions from libraries or personal subscriptions. Unfortunately, there are two major problems with this model. Firstly, access to research is limited to subscription holders. And secondly, the publishers charge high subscription fees. This lack of access to research hinders both the progress of science and advancement of knowledge in academia. In an effort to solve these inherent problems with traditional publishing, there was a revolution in this industry, and with it came the rise of new publishing models. One of these new models was open access publishing, which is very similar to traditional publishing, except that instead of journal subscriptions covering editing, publication, and distribution costs, the author covers them, and the published article is made available to readers at no charge. Furthermore, the articles published under this model experience less stringent copyright and licensing restrictions. Unfortunately, predatory publishers have emerged which take advantage of these publishing models, especially the open access model, and thrive in the publish or perish culture in academia. So what is predatory publishing? Like legitimate open access journals, predatory journals charge publication fees to the authors. But unlike legitimate open access journals, which follow the best editorial and publication practices, predatory journals have subpar or non-existent peer review processes. In 2019, Nature defined predatory journals and publishers as entities that prioritize self-interest at the expense of scholarship and are characterized by false or misleading information, deviation from best editorial and publication practices, a lack of transparency, and or the use of aggressive and indiscriminate solicitation practices. Predatory journals and publishers continue to flourish in academia. One study showed that from 2010 to 2014, the number of predatory publications increased from 53,000 to 420,000. In 2012, a study which was performed in Italy showed that out of 46,000 researchers, 5% of them had published in a predatory journal, either because they were unaware that the journal was predatory or because of the pressure to publish. Now we will look at some negative consequences of falling prey to predatory publishing. Some negative consequences for the author include gaining a tainted reputation and career, which can negatively impact funding decisions, hiring and promotion opportunities, being subject to unexpected additional processing fees, experiencing copyright disputes with the publisher, having no guarantee that the published research will remain digitally accessible or continue to exist sometime after publication experiencing difficulty retracting a published article and having it published in a legitimate journal, and lastly, wasting research funds. Those who read articles from predatory journals may be exposed to false or misleading information because the findings of the paper may not be supported by the proper scientific methodology or because the published paper may not have been vetted through standard publication practices. We will now look at some red flags of predatory publishing. As authors and as readers, we need to be vigilant when determining the legitimacy of a journal. 
There are hundreds of checklists designed to help you identify potential predatory journals or publishers, and the following are red flags which these checklists tend to have in common. And the first red flag is a lack of professionalism, and that includes an unprofessional looking website, articles, and emails, typographical errors, poor language, grammar and syntax, misspelling of scientific terminology, use of unauthorized figures, poor quality images, lack of institutional emails, and irrelevant text. The second red flag is false information. That includes having fake metrics such as impact index, false or contradictory claims, false advertising, and incorrect addresses. The third red flag is poor publication practices, which include not having a retraction policy, little to no editing or peer review, promise of rapid publication, promise of rapid review, manuscripts not reflecting the journal title and scope, submission of manuscripts via email, guaranteed publication, no information about digital preservation of the article after publication, suspiciously low processing or publication fees, typically less than $150, and publishing hundreds of journals over a short period of time. The fourth red flag is a lack of transparency. This includes having no editorial board, or the editorial board doesn't reflect the journal title, no evidence of the editor's standing in the discipline, no contact information provided for the editor, ambiguous or no peer review process, no information about the publisher location, or the location does not match the name of the journal, unclear or unavailable fees, and the journal not being associated with any societies, universities, or institutions. And the fifth red flag is aggressive solicitation, which includes repeated emails, excessively complimentary emails, requests to submit in the journal outside your field of research, and mass solicitation emails. User discretion is advised. Many of these checklists do not have a scoring system and may not be based on empirical evidence, so it can be difficult to determine whether or not you are dealing with a predatory journal or publisher. Therefore, try to find a checklist which meets these criteria. Comment down below if you've encountered any predatory journals in the past and what were some of the red flags which you noticed. Now we will look at some useful resources for identifying predatory publishing. Firstly, Bial's List, which is a popular and controversial list of potential, possible, or probable predatory publishers. Unfortunately, as of January 2017, the list is no longer updated. However, it still remains a valuable resource. Secondly, the Directory of Open Access Journals, which requires journals to follow the principles of transparency and best practice in publishing before they can be added to the list. If the journal is not listed in the Directory of Open Access Journals, it could be an indication that the journal is predatory. But keep in mind that it takes about a year of publishing before new journals can apply for indexing. Thirdly, ask a librarian or experienced researcher, as they have more experience in spotting predatory journals. Fourthly, Cavill's Blacklist, which is a list of deceptive and predatory journals accessible through a subscription. They also have a whitelist of what they call verified, reputable journals. Fifthly, Google search the title of the journal and the word predatory to see if there is any news about their connection. Sixthly, Journal Citation Reports Database, which can be used to verify information about the impact factor of a journal. Seventhly, searching indexes and databases like Medline or Web of Science. Predatory journals are rarely indexed in reputable databases. And lastly, industry initiatives such as the Committee on Publication Ethics, COPE, Open Access Scholarly Publishers Association, OASPA, Journals Online Project, JOL, African Journals Online Project, AJOL. Once again, predatory journals are rarely included in these initiatives. Unfortunately, there isn't one comprehensive list, which you can refer to in order to determine if a journal is predatory. Journals classified as predatory on some lists may not be included on others. Therefore, using all these resources and looking out for red flags can help you come to a conclusion about the legitimacy of a journal. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell icon to not miss any new uploads. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to shoot for the stars!